Hey, and a very warm welcome to the Into the Light Web podcast with me, your hostess, Joanna Hunter, metaphysical teacher, spiritual life and business coach, published author, and the high priestess of the Light Web, a spiritual technology that will change your life. This is the place to be to talk everything under the Light Web from consciousness, relationships, to money, to spiritual business, and everything in between. Hi, it's Joanna Hunter here for another episode of Into the Light Web podcast. And today is Emily Gray joining me on my million dollar lab series. Hi, Emily. Warm welcome. Come and introduce yourself and tell people what it is that you do in the world. Thanks for having me, Joanna. Okay. I am a big, big fan of female entrepreneurs. So before I tell you what I do, I'll tell you what I initially dreamed of doing, um, because maybe I can form a bond with some listeners. So I originally went to college to major in dance to be Britney Spears backup dancer. That is a true story. (laughs) And actually you see that in all that I do now, I love being the person behind the scenes, cheering on now it's female entrepreneurs, um, spoiler alert, uh, Brittany pulled herself out of um, doing performances in 2007, which is the year I graduated from college. I ended up working for a Swiss investment bank, story for another day. But around the age of 30, I was living in London, uh, living and working all over the world with a Swiss investment bank, and I had a third of life crisis. And I don't know if anyone else has ever felt that a quarter life crisis, a third of life crisis. Um, uh, you're halfway there and you have a life crisis, but it was just this internal thing. I didn't know how to define that just felt like a nagging for years. Mm. And then all of a sudden a flip switched. And now I know more about what that is, that knowing and that intuition. Um, and I up and quit that job. People thought I was crazy at the time. I was a vice president of change management and communications of a 55,000 person bank. And that fancy title meant that I was charged with helping train middle and senior managers on how to help their teams navigate in the face of chaos, um, right. their goals. So it's a lot of what's happened in the last year and a half globally. So I did that. Oh, sure. Job. 2008 crisis and every all the fallout since then but here's what I did when I quit which is what I do now (laughs) in the last six years of my life um, I own the flourish market we are a women's and gifts boutique in downtown Raleigh North Carolina which is the middle of the east coast in the USA we are um we're a million dollar business, brick and mortar store. I've got 16 employees. We're in a 3,500 square foot facility, um, which is very, very large. And I didn't start there. Here's how I started. <laughs> when I quit my corporate job, I took $8,000 and I exchanged that money, my savings for an old uniform delivery truck, which I converted to a fashion truck, a little mini boutique on wheels. Oh and God, I'll repeat I again, <laughs> I'll repeat again, people thought I was nutsos because here I was in a career where I was such a boss. I knew what it took to climb the corporate ladder. I was well on my way. People would joke and say, you're going to be the CEO. I would have never been. And actually I didn't want that. Um, but yeah, I just jumped off that ladder and started something with zero background in retail zero background in retail. I actually didn't even shop that much in stores. And I'd certainly never walked onto a fashion truck, a little mini boutique on wheels before they didn't exist in my city. Um, and it was just an idea I got off of Pinterest when I was searching tiny houses. So when I say life crisis, I really mean life crisis, but it's turned out well, because it actually wasn't a crisis at all. It was paying attention to what my next steps were meant to be in this world and why I was here. And and today, um, you know, we started by carrying 10 brands. So all of our products have a bigger purpose. They're tied to a social good cause. Um, They're made by really cool founders, just like all of you listening. I think everyone has a really cool story to tell of why they're selling what they're selling. 
um, to now we carry over 200 brands. I think we're closely coming up on 250 brands. And I now work with brands most of my day. So I have a team of 16. They're in the store most of the time. Um, I'm never scheduled to be in my store, but I do check in and, and have lots of fun with customers when I'm in there. But the majority of my time is now spent the last year, year and a half, walking alongside these incredible brand owners and these makers in helping guide them on how to land and grow wholesale accounts. So get their products on store shelves. I think that's like my the next step I was supposed to do after launching this store. I'm so, so, so fulfilled doing that work. I feel like I'm walking in my purpose. I get it pretty much every single day, super excited to do what I get to do. And at the close of the day, I, I literally every single day, I was thinking about this because I want to be very honest in what I said, but at, as I, right before I joined you, Joanne, I was thinking every single day for at least the last two to three months, I closed my computer at the end of the day and felt a deep sense of gratitude for who I get to work with and the work I get to do. I love that. And that's the real sense when you're in alignment and you're working your soul's purpose. And I, I love that you started with a little fashion boutique because I started my first business. It was a brick and mortar shop. I started it with three. My investment was mini mini. So my investment was 3,000 pounds. That was at UK pounds. And that painted my shop, bought my shop sign, got my interior shop stuff, plus my stock. I don't even know how I did it. Right. But it was one of these things we did it on a shoestring we were doing all the work ourselves um and then my brand just over like it grew really quickly so then we ended up on three locations but because we live in the north of scotland we would take the shop on the road so we didn't take it in a van we would put it all right. in a van and then we would arrive like at a village hall and set up a makeshift like shop for a couple of days so that people that were in more remote areas could like buy clothes and stuff so I love I love the little van and I think it's it's thinking outside the box you know like because yes. people get endeared with stuff like that they're like oh my god this is so cool like this is cool and I think when you're willing to not follow the status quo and not do the normal thing and you know you you when you started that you were smart enough like I was 23 and so green it was like I didn't know better so I was doing it all the wrong way but actually worked out perfectly because people were like wow I've never seen that before or like oh my god how cool is that and so I would like encounter little problems in the business and I would just like I would just problem solve them how I thought would be the best way but like then it always ended up in this situation where people are like oh my god like wow this is so cool you know I remember a customer saying to me oh I wish I lived closer and so and and I said I, I would I would say um, I just wish I lived closer she said like this and I said well what if the shop came to you and she went what I tell all my Perfect. friends and that, that was it rest was history I was in a van heading up the road to see her you know <laughs> I love it and I think that encompasses what we do we listen right to our people that are really driving with us and on the same page and we have that gut moment of yeah well I'll just what if I come to you we have a big thing in our business where we say yes and figure it out later so if we're feeling that gut uh that that just knowing we're like yes and then the person leaves and we figure it out but actually joanna what we did is we returned to our roots during the pandemic when we had to be shut down we actually even though i've sold my fashion truck we did pop-ups we loaded it all up into my suv we went and set up pretty much four to five days a week this past summer and during the pandemic in people, we called them porch pop-ups and we set up, we were like, if you have a porch, a driveway or a street backyard, anything we will set up. And people invited their friends because they were desperate to do something new, something interesting, something safe. And so it's, that was a lot of hard work, but it kept us in business and sustained the brands that we ordered from, from our order level perspective. I have to say that, and I know that this is not very PC to say this, but like, <laughs> I really, really have to say that I have loved the pandemic in what is the innovation that has come from 
us going through this crisis. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's people that have died, and I am not making light of that. But from an entrepreneurial perspective, there has been some what I feel real winners during this crisis. We've all gone through it. We've all been in that lockdown. We've all gone through this. It's been hard. It's been difficult. But it is these entrepreneurs like yourself that have thought outside the box, that have pivoted with the change. They've been flexible enough with the change. And then we have other people who have stayed so rigid, it's literally broken them, right? Like, because if you think of something really hard, it's brittle and it breaks. But like the people who are willing to bend and be flexible and create something different and be like, okay, this is happening right now. Like, how can we move with this? For me, you know, as somebody, I'm absolutely business obsessed, um, which for many years, because I'm also very, very spiritual and worked with lots of spiritual energy for a long, long time, like it never jived together. And one of the things that I love is I love seeing how people tackle problems within business, like issues and things, because I think that's when the true merit of an entrepreneur rises to the surface. And when you know that's when the biggest innovations in the world come you know I've, I've had some really really fascinating people on the podcast and you know and a lot of them have really massively expanded during the pandemic they've pivoted they've changed they've moved with it and it's turned out to be an amazing thing um I'm reminded of one of the guests that we had on his name was Rune and um you know he did home services like he was like you you called up his company and they would match you with someone to come and clear your gutters or clean your house or and of course pandemic nobody was going anywhere right and and he made he he said something really powerful was like he said to his business partner when they heard that the country was going in lockdown he said to his business partner we have to scrap everything that we have done before this point. We have to begin today as though this is day one in our business. And then they rolled that ethos out and mm-hmm. ended up like doubling their income. <laughs> and I think when things arise, a couple of reflections on that one, I think an integrated person, we can hold both things about the pandemic, the hard and the good, right? And yes. I think if we yes. only hold one, if we only hold the hard, we sit in excuses and fear and that brittle, we're not able to pivot, right? But I think it's important to partially hold the hard, but in tandem with holding all of that, we have to also hold um, gratitude. Where can we look for opportunities? How can we still show up and serve in solutions versus excuses? So I find like the change manager hat and me from corporate, we have to get this out first, right? So I had my team sit around and we wrote out all of our fears, all of our worst case scenarios, which going out of business, you know, all these things and all the excuses of why we wouldn't be successful. And when we got that out, I mean, I made them go until we couldn't think of any last thing anymore. I'm like, okay. I love this. And then it's the women we partner with on our business, especially in in the developing world and and, and even in the U.S. and some of their lives, they cannot make excuses. It is the difference between their kids eating or not, right? There's no one there with a backup plan for them. And so they can't sit in the excuses and they can't sit in the fear, right? So they they get that out, right? (laughs) And then they move to solutions, right? And so the change manager in me is like, okay, move through this. We can still hold this as true, and as possibilities. And then let's also talk about this and hold these together and live integrated and, and market from an integrated perspective, because if we're marketing from forgetting this and not um, acknowledging this, like you acknowledge this, right? But if we don't, then we're, it's a miss as well with our audience. And then the second reflection I had on what you were saying, the examples you were using is the solutions we come up with. I love that he was like, let's start this from day one. We went to our customers. We listened to our customers. I got on like 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. Zoom roundtables of five to 10 to 15 customers on each one. Over 100 women signed up to help us to come to these Zoom feedback sessions. We sent out a two question survey to our email list. One of the questions this past July was, um, uh, well, the July before last. Oh my gosh, we've lived through so many, <laughs> so many months of this. I'm like, what is time? Um, we asked them two questions. One of which was, how can we up level our web presence? Um, what would help you shop more online for shipping and also curbside pickup? Because so many people were still not coming in our shop, right? So listening to them, 
doing votes in our Insta stories. What type of products did they want? And just letting them help us co-create these solutions, right? Of what would help them because in any economy, no matter what it is, people need help with something. People yes. actually need to use their money for something. We just have to show up and meet them there in the way that we can. I, I'm we're on video. So if you're listening to the podcast, I'm doing some hand motions to create the Venn diagram. <laughs> Maybe we all learned in school growing up, but in one circle, I think about, okay, listening to our customers needs, what are they needing? <laughs> one woman, we joke, because on the survey she put, she needed new recipes. She was tired. She's having to cook all the time because restaurants were open. Right, so like, yeah. I need new recipes. Well, your girl, Emily, she don't cook. Okay. Like I don't even know up from bottom on my pan. Okay. My one pan that I own in my one spatula. And so that's one of the solutions that doesn't make it into this next circle of how can we show up creatively as me, as a brand, as our team. And where those two circles overlap is how we can show up and come forward with new solutions, new services, new products, and always be innovative. Because I, like you, Joanna, saw after the last pandemic, 100 years ago, so many inventions came out of that. And, and I'm so interested to see in 10 to 20 years, when we look back at things just launching, the seeds of of them were planted and these ideas were started in the midst of something so horrible in our globe. I think if we look for it, we can always we, we find do, opportunity. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the human race does really thrive in adversity because we see the same with wars that we've had, the innovation that has happened in those very short years. We get clever. We get, you know, we come up with cool stuff during these times where it's hard. It's tough. Right. But it's like, it's like the cream rises to the surface and it's like, okay, how can we roll with this and, and just kind of roll with it. One of the things I wanted to zone in on there, and I've got to just recall what you said there, but there was, um, asking your customers to co-create with you. Right. Yes. I love this. This gets me really excited because, there is this tendency, and especially in the online world as well, like you have to have it all figured out. Like, you know, like I'm really into reiterating the message of evolution and growth over a lifetime, right? Like that we're here to evolve, we're here to grow over a lifetime, it does not have to happen instantaneously. Like it's okay for you to evolve, it's okay, like what was good, like a few months ago, you might I grow that and you know, it's good for the next thing. Mm -hmm. And there is this thing that we have to have our crap together, right? And mm. like we present this thing, like we have it all figured out. Come over here. We have it all. And you know what? That really is creates what I call like Teflon. It's like nothing mm -hmm. sticks to it. It's no. super like, you know, and, and so it's not memorable. But when people, when you recruit people to come and help you, like these Zoom mm -hmm. meetings and things like that, they feel valued, they feel heard, yes. they feel like yes. they're part of it. And the co-creating with your customers, I think not only is it genius, but it's also, I feel like one of the keys to successful business in this current marketplace mm -hmm. and in this current world, because people want to feel like they're part of something. They don't want you to figure it all out. And yet our egos say to us, we must know exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it. Right. We cannot right. evolve in front of the customer. <laughs> and like what I have found is the opposite of when you're willing to to show the evolution in front of people, people are so inspired by your journey. They're like, yes, I want to get behind this. Yes, I want to be part of this brand. Yes, I want to be in this. And I love that you took that and created something incredible from it. And I'm sure that these, you know, these pop-up events that you did were probably like a highlight of somebody's week mm -hmm. during the pandemic, right? Like it was like, yes. the, the it was, it was people want to give feedback. And so for all of you who have products, especially, I mean, service-based business coaches listen up as well, but I'm going to dork out a little bit with my change manager hat from <laughs> investment baking. Um, so one of my tasks was, uh, I'll give you a scenario that I was leading change management through. It was moving from managers moving out of their offices into open floor plans. Okay. It was called like smart working, right? And so it was basically like the co-working spaces you see around town or see around your cities. But this was 15 years ago when 
it was awful. I mean, telling these managers they were losing their corner offices, right? That they had worked 20, 30 years to achieve. And then telling they were going to hot desk next to potentially someone who was just hired a year ago. This was a hard change to get people behind, right? And so actually I think of that when you're trying to sell a new product, even if it already exists in the market, when you're launching something, or even if you've been in business many years and you're launching a new collection, right? Right. Putting that out there, it can fall on deaf ears or it's so easy. There's just so much noise right now. And when I was leading change, there was so much noise. People were like, are we doing this? So we, are we going to end up getting laid off? I'm not going to be able to perform my job. Like, why is this happening? Right. And so I liken that to the past year and a half in the pandemic. There's so much noise. So many people asking for people to help their businesses, right? I'm going to speak later at our state of downtown event. And I'm going to go on stage and boldly ask for people to keep supporting our businesses. And I've got to do it in a unique way. And I'm going to take their input. I'm very excited for how I'm going to present this. But the tip to you guys as business owners for products, services, coaches, whatever, you have to get people involved in feedback in the runway stage. The longer the runway, the better the success. So here's what an example of that can look like. If you're making earrings and you are you're uh, like two months or three months out from your collection launch, Why don't you show people and serve them by talking about the colors that are trending this coming spring? And why don't you put up votes? Why don't you do a live where you're getting their feedback? Why don't you show them behind the scenes, show them, get them to vote on the materials? Do they want like four inch long earrings? Do they want statement earrings or more studs? Get people's feedback because when they feel that they've been co-creators of your collection, not only are they going to buy, they're going to share it. Okay. Cause you're building their excitement and they feel a part of something cool. And not everyone's That's called right. to be an entrepreneur. Most people are called to be consumers of the work that entrepreneurs do. So, but we've got to invite them in, in corporate. What I did was I sat these senior managers down. I sat them down. They got to design what was in their control. Okay. I could get their feedback on the colors. I could get their feedback on the chairs. I could get their feedback on the protocols that we made for the space. So they couldn't have control over most things, but where I was able to get their feedback on, on day one, they weren't super happy, right? But they were happier and more bought in than they would have been if I hadn't invited them. And guess what? By day five or six, they were like, Emily, this is great. All right. So we can use those same principles with launching a product for the first time or launching new collections because you want to create walking billboards for your business. I've never paid a penny for advertising. I've never taken out a loan. Okay. And within a month and a half, I paid myself back that $8,000. Okay. Cause yes, I went in with a lot of privilege. I had that savings and I get that so many people don't. So I claim that I'm like, yes, absolutely. However, from that point forward, I did not take any of my other money. I have not. And I bootstrapped everything. And my my business became a million dollar business in right at the three year mark, like right under three years. And that was through the power of word of mouth. We've listened to our customers, invited them into our story, and they've gone out and become walking billboards for us. And that can happen for you, too. We don't have to show up with our crap together. Okay. It's so much more fun for everyone to be involved and and to um, be in the kitchen cooking with you. Look, I just used a cooking reference and I don't cook. (laughs) (laughs) But what I love is I, you know, I love that you have also used organic marketing for a a brick and mortar store because I did organic marketing. My my problem with my stores was that my ideal client at that point in my stores was the MTV generation because we're talking like 2000 when I had my stores. So, um, you know, and they were the MTV generation and this was a generation that was disconnecting from news. They were disconnecting from magazines. They were disconnecting from um, newspapers, the traditional ways of marketing. Social media hadn't really become a big thing. There was MySpace and Bebo, like, but that was more towards the the end of when I had my shop. So in 2000, we pioneered text message marketing and, um, and it was so innovative that there wasn't even a platform online in which you could send bulk text messages. So I actually had a guy write it for us who told me like, it will never catch on. And then a uh, three years later sold it for millions. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it like, it's amazing. And it was such an amazing thing. But again, it was that thinking outside the box because the MTV generation, they were the early adopters of the mobile phone. 
and nobody was speaking to them on the device of their choice which was a phone back then right because like it's hard to imagine a time without mobiles but like it really was Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was only just coming in in the 2000s uh, and not everybody had had one. And we transitioned from those like giant yuppie things, you know, like all, all the yuppies had to like the smaller, the Nokia 3510 thing. I love it. Yes. And then, you know, so <laughs> moving back through the sands of time. Um, but, you know, that's the that's the thing. And, and I think, you know, that that was an organic way to reach people as well. And, uh, and I you're think- You're meeting them where they are, right? Absolutely, That's you're meeting them where they your are. You're speaking to them mm-hmm. on what they love. Like you're speaking yes. to them on a level that they love. Like they, yes. they love the phones and they were like, wow, this is so cool. Like my my favorite shop is texting me and telling me there's new stock. Like, wow, <laughs> you know, like- anything, Those were the days when texts that. were cool and few and far between. So when you heard your phone go off, you were like, did anyone else hear that? I'm cool, I got a text now. Exactly. like. Every- Everyone who keeps their photo on silent, yeah, like 200 texts at the end of the day. But that was still in the early days. Where it was like, exactly, in the early like, days. Oh, it's learning to like roll with <laughs> the, the things, right? It's learning yes. to roll with it. And I've seen a lot of small boutiques and businesses embrace live streaming during yeah. the pandemic and obviously sending their goods and then doing like a little live case showcase, which is amazing and things. So if you, you know, you've given us some great tips for if you're developing your like brand and you're kind of like a product based business and stuff like that with having that longer runway to launch and using feedback to really get people to feel like they're co-creating with it. Is there anything else that you think makes a really like standout brand and really remarkable brand in today's noisy, noisy world? Mm. So in today's noisy, noisy world, I can tell you that retailers are having a very hard time finding the brands we need and the products we need. Um, Google is hard. Winning that SEO is hard for independent brands like we're searching for. So there's actually never been a better time to pitch retailers. I think people, at least my clients in my monthly coaching program, they every month ask, are you sure? We just feel like we're going to be bothering retailers or retailers doing okay. We know you've been through a lot. And I'm actually like, please pitch us if you think your products will sell for us and reach out to us because because our consumers are demanding new products of us, right? Things are changing. Then I start carrying loungewear and self-care products and mental health sort of items, okay? Now it's like, is it going to be roaring 20s or people like going out and partying? Okay, this new variant's here, so we're not sure. Okay, now people are like completely redoing their homes and the backgrounds of their Zoom, so we need home items. We like never before have needed new brands and products. And the cool thing is, which will be everyone listening to this, um, if you sell a brand, if you have a brand, consumers want to know who's behind the brand. So standout Mm. brands to me are brands that show who they are, literally who is behind the brand, show your face, show the behind the scenes, be, put yourself out there. And I know some people just did a big gulp because it, you don't feel I safe to do that, <laughs> right? Like you don't feel safe to do that. Right. But you are yes. not safe as a brand. If you do not do that in this new post quote, post COVID economy. Okay. Consumers have realized the power of their purchases. They've seen their favorite brands, stores, restaurants go under. And so now they're more, the economic trend reports are showing this again. I was investment banking background. I'm obsessed with data. The data supports this, that people are realizing the value of their dollar. Okay. And so they're wanting cool brands from stores. They're not looking for things that are mass produced, that are made in sweatshops, that are made by children, that are made in unfair working conditions. Yes, some people don't care about, but the trends we're seeing is more consumers are actually caring about who makes their products, where they come from, that they're eco conscious, women owned. Think about all these values right absolutely Whoever you minority, are listening like to black this. owned brands black owned businesses lgbtq women, yes. owned businesses uh, male owned businesses as well have a cool story right have a give back have show your purpose i think like stand out so stand out brands brands one pitch us number two put their face out there number three show their purpose their values and that's at the forefront of their marketing All right. Because that's a standout to me. There are a million black phone cases on the market, right? There's a people that is a crowded marketplace. It's noisy, 
but no one can be you and replicate you and your values and your integrity and the purpose you have, right? Joanna, this is what you teach people. And so putting that forth and I can give a few um, recommendations on pitching us if that would be helpful. Yeah, (laughs) go for it. Yes, I think people would love to hear that. So I'll tell you the three, let's start with the three mistakes I see people make and then I'll tell you what to do instead, Mm -hmm. okay? So- Um, when pitching retailers, and also if you don't have a product or you're not pitching retailers, this is just in general, the issues I see with pitch emails. So if you're pitching an influencer, you're pitching another brand that you want to do business with, keep these mistakes in mind because it works the same. Number one, mass emails or Instagram messages. So where it is like, hello, comma, and then your pitch. Okay. Or even hello, the flourish market. Instead, you really need to focus on quality over quantity and you need to show them you know them. So actually, if you go to my website, I have a whole like training that's for free where I give you my pitch email template, it's a five-step recipe, oh, and I give you word for word. That's at um, emilygray.co. I, all the links will be in the show notes, but that's something I like to put for free out the internet because I'm like, I want you independent brand owners and makers to score these, um, these retail accounts. And I literally write out word for word, but I'll give you the recipe now. Show them you know them. So start with their name. You can go to the about page of these retail shops and see the owners. Name, exactly, right? right. It's not difficult in this day and age. No, to it's that not. Out, right? It's not. And then the first two sentences, this is the opposite of what your brain will tell you, but it's this pr- a principle of psychology to show them you know them. So the second mistake I see is most brands start with who you are and about your brand because you just want to get to the point right away. Does this person, is this going to sell for them or not? They just need to know about me. No, stalk me. All right, come up with two very specific sentences that show me you know me because from a psychology principle, if you show me you've done the research and taken time to really research me, it tells me two things. One, I'm worth your time. So I'm going to give you mine. And two, this isn't just going to be some general pitch. You truly have done your research and you've evaluated that your products will sell for us. Okay. Mm. So uh, some of these sentences, an example could be, um, hi, Flourish Market team. Emily, I have loved following you and the team on social media and seeing how you've pivoted during COVID to offer $20 and under gift items. I've loved watching you do your porch pop-ups. They seem so fun. That is a person that has spent, it doesn't take you long, 10 minutes on my Instagram account. Okay, guys, it's it not some that time hard. To actually, yes. con- this is one of the things that really pushes my <laughs> buttons, what I call unconscious marketing. And it oh, is exactly, yes. it's that, it's complete, <laughs> like, it is the opposite of someone who is awake. It is just like, let me just mass email this thing and hope that you're going to give me the time of day. And you're like, my God, I my feel like it's right no. special as something that's stuck to the bottom of your shoe yes. right now. Like, and what you teach Joanna is to be conscious, to be embodied. And, and so when we receive these mass emails, my gut says no. My intuition Absolutely. says no. Whereas it's if like you a full body, like hard no. That's you almost exactly want to push right. the energy back and, and be like that. This is so exactly I love right. this. Take time to get to know them. And of it's course, no, we're living in a digital age. It's so freaking yeah. easy. It's it's not it rocket so science. Go to their Instagram. It's so easy to find information. And then the third mistake is um making the next steps elusive or hard to follow. So let's say you're pitching someone you want to be on their uh, podcast, or let's say you're pitching an, an, um, another business to do a collaboration. Well, can you throw out a time and date as an option? Or can you link your Calendly link or something? When people are pitching me as a retailer, so many people don't include the link to their website or directions on how to order. And that to me, obviously the, what to do is to easy button next steps, make it clear because a retailer, pretty much anyone's making a decision within a few minutes. Okay. A few seconds of reading that email. I want to be able to click that link, have don't no barriers to the order. Don't make me work for it. If you need a code for 50% off or whatever it is, I already have it. Or you're linked on one of the reselling sites and that I already have a code for and place my order there. And so that's just some quick tips, but I hope that's helpful because um, I'll say it and say it again. We are looking for you and we cannot find you. And instead of trying to figure out SEO and fight that way, 
Be very conscious in your marketing. Think about it as a good time investment that if you spend an hour consciously, intentionally pitching three retail accounts, that's a great time investment because that investment is going to grow because at least one of those accounts is probably going to order for you order from you. So I hope you can feel my passion when I talk about this. I love it. I love it. It's really got me excited because this is what I love, you know, and I think, you know, we can get into that rut of like, it's so hard. Nobody wants to know about me. My business is too small, but like these are proper juicy, actionable steps that we can get on. And listen, it's not hard to pitch three people in a day. You know, to sit down, get on your computer, do your research, sit with a cup of tea, enjoy doing the research, make it a joyful practice that you do, and then take that time and write to them and, you know, and get that and follow that sense. And, you know, the last step, I have a similar step in in my business. So I teach lots of different entrepreneurs from product based, like artists and things like that, right the way through to like coaches and wellness people and things like that that are in my world. But my number one rule from my product based business days of having brick and mortar shops is make it easy for your customer. That's it. Like, yes, not rocket science, make it easy for your customer, because if they have to think you start getting people dropping off, if they have to start looking you get more people dropping off. If they have to freaking work for it to actually know how to purchase or do the next step, even more fall off. So then you've got like this one Joe Blogs that is like the diehard. They work for it's it. It's like hanging you know, in there. They're like, I will get this. On the road. You know, and then you, you're you so disappointed because you're like, there's just one person, you know, and I'm like, yeah, but everybody else would have been in if the link had been there. <laughs> It's so true. I just had that visual of someone like, like, this, like, like, I will, you know, the you, there's always like one, that's like a pure diehard, you know, but yes. I'm like, I discovered really early on, like, if you made it so easy for people, like click here, do this, do that. Yes. Like, here's, here's the link. People are, are so on it. They're like, oh, yeah. awesome. And, yes. you know, and another thing that I, that goes in with that tip is sometimes people don't know you have something for sale. Mm, right like so if true. you're if you're especially if you're online right like and you're doing a live stream and you're providing massive value and maybe you're like you're a stylist right but you have a, your own clothing brand so you're styling pieces together people are like oh that's nice that's so nice oh my gosh she's really good she's amazing but then like it flies over the top of their heads mm-hmm. that actually all the items being shown are actually for sale you like, could buy that you gotta yes. lead them to the to the trough yeah you gotta lead them and be like you know what, if you see any of the items here that you like, you can get them. Here's exactly how to order them. Yes. I think especially as women, we need to be more bold and asking for yeah, the sell. People you know aren't going to buy it. They don't want to, but if you believe in your product and your service, whatever you're selling, if you truly believe in it, let's be bold. Let's step forward in that power. Because if you have, for me, I'm always telling the brands in my coaching program, I'm like, if you have a product that will sell for me, I need you to be successful. So you're preventing me from being successful. How dare you hold back the keys to the kingdom from me? You're not bothering me. Sure. I might decide it's not like the best fit for us, but it takes me less than a minute to read your email. And guess what? What if I do agree that the products are great for us. Well, here's a couple hundred dollars every few weeks, probably of orders to you. And guess what? We get to partner together in this great work. And I, especially, you know, I work with um, men as well, but I, especially, you know, I actually never coached a man that struggled with this. <laughs> I'm like, women, let's go. Let's you know be why bold. We women struggle with this. This is something that yeah, I, I have a lot of thoughts with. on it, but it's I'd love good, to hear it's yours. A good girl wound. <laughs> it's the good girl wound, mm. right? Cause you're saying be bold, right? Good girls are not bold. Be a good girl mm. now, right? Be a good girl now, don't make a fuss. Be a good girl now, don't do this. I call it the good girl wound. It's a wounding that we women mm. receive as children. And in order to conform to the good girl, we have to yep. play at a much lesser field. So when yes. it comes to like screaming and shouting about this like amazing product we've made, right? And we know it's amazing. <laughs> all of that conditioning kicks in Mm -hmm. and suddenly we're like 
the, the throat seizes up and we're like, oh, my, but people will think I'm, I'm, uh -huh. I'm being too big for my britches, right? Like yeah. who's heard that well, too big for my britches? I love in your work, you help people deconstruct the structures around us that we grew up in. And Absolutely. what's cool is that every time we step forward and are bold, even when we feel like we're going to throw up one of my clients the other day in our group uh, call, she goes, I was at this coffee shop. She sells tea. She's like, I was at this local coffee shop and I was ordering tea. And she was like, sorry. The owner was like, or the person behind the counter was like, sorry for the limited amount of uh, options. We just had our local tea provider decide she wasn't going to wholesale anymore. She was taking a step back in her business. And she goes, I felt like I was going to throw up, but I was like, hello, my name is da -da -da, and my business is da -da -da, and I live down the road and I actually wholesale. I've just started my business. And the woman was like, oh my God, I'm the owner. I love some samples. And she goes, I'll go get them right now. And guess what? She made a huge sale. Everyone's loving her tea. And so we go scared. We go feeling like we're going to throw up because the ground shakes, right? When we step forward. Because good, good girls are not bold. Good girls are not bold. Right? And so don't wait to feel fearless. Like we go with courage, right? We, I love Brene Brown and everything she teaches. But yes. if you're feeling scared, if you're feeling like you're going to throw up, you are awake to the realities around you and the structures around you. And yet we still go knowing that there's women around you. My friend, every day I try to do something bold. So I can tell people who listen on podcasts to me or my clients, my friends, hey, when you're doing something hard, think of Emily and Raleigh doing something hard too. We need each other and we need to be reminded that we're not crazy if we feel that fear and that sickness. And guess what? The more you do it, the less you feel. Those all those negative Amazing. effects and exactly. like the more you feel empowered. We do it scared and then we get to the other side of it and we're like, what? I didn't die? And you're like, no, actually you got money. You, you, you got yes. paid. You didn't die. You got paid. And you made like, income oh, and oh impact. God. This is amazing. Yes. I love it. I love it. Oh, Emily, I have just adored this conversation. Where is your favorite place to hang out on the internet? We're going to pop all your links, your website, love all it. the things, but like, where's your favorite place to hang out on the internet? So people love can connect it quickly. I'm going to give everyone one place and then I'm very niche down for those that this applies to, I'll give you a second place. Okay. So okay, the one perfect. place I love hanging out, I hope y'all are on Instagram. You can follow me there at Emily gray underway and gray is spelled with G R E Y. I show the behind the scenes of running a business. I show my 70 pound pit bull sinking my kayak. I show it all. And I really aim to, um, just, show you what life and business can look like as someone who has scaled into a million dollar business and still has a life that I love and actually like feel like I'm walking in purpose. I also share the hard and the bad and the ugly with you, not in like sure. a womp womp way yeah, that'll I bum you out, that. but like in a like, okay, I'm not alone knowing that today is hard. Okay. So please join me there. The second place that will be for some of you, if you are a brand owner and you are specifically interested in starting a wholesale side of your business, so getting your products onto retailer shelves, um, whether you already have a few accounts or whether you have zero, please visit me at thewholesaleway.com, okay? Thewholesaleway.com. And if that's not you and you have a friend that does pop-ups that she or he has, uh, they make products please send them there. This is such a small group and of people I'm very niched in who I serve and come alongside. But if that is you or a friend, please send them to the wholesale oh my God. and we can hang out there too. Perfect. Thank you so much, Emily. I have loved this. We could have talked for another hour. We're so on the Good. same wavelength. <laughs> Um, and I think a final comment really is be bold, be bold, be bold. It, you know, seize the day and be bold in your business. Thank you so much, Emily. I will, I'm sure I will be following you slash stalking you on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening. And Joanna, thank you for the work you do in the world. I don't think there's really many people, if not anyone else combining the um, whole intuition side with also tangible business tips. I think it's really powerful what you're doing. Many people leave one or the other behind and back to what we started with that integrated approach, right? Holding yes. both hands going forward with that really helps people step out and be bold. So thanks for the work you do. Oh, thank you. Thank you.